Okay, so I, I apologize in advance if this this video is a bit rambly or it's paced poorly or it's kind of jumps all over the place. This is not scripted. I'm just going off the cuff. So if it's if it is that way, I apologize ahead of time. Now I want to talk about the some d design philosophies when you're creating a, a UI because it seems that I come across I come at this this question of how do you make a UI from a bit of a different angle than a lot of people do or at least most people do it it seems like and so let's let's talk about that so first of all like let's start from the very basic let's go as fundamental as possible what's the purpose of a UI well if you think about it really the whole point of having a UI at all is that it is designed it is supposed to convey information about the state of the game that's it it's supposed to convey that information to you okay so what well because we can make choices about our ui that means that inherently some choices are going to convey information easier than others and so your ui should be the a, a ideally should be one that conveys all of the information that you would want to know as efficiently as possible and figuring that out is something that you have to do on your own ultimately because that's why everybody's ui is a bit different and and just straight copying somebody else like yeah that works but ultimately building one yourself gets better results in my opinion but whatever so now that we have that uh, this idea of like what's the purpose of building ui okay how, how do we do that how do we convey this information well first before we can even do that we need to figure out what information is is gameplay impacting what information is absolutely vital or critical whatever wording you want to use what's the most important information that you would want to know and for me i i classify that as gameplay impacting as in it's going to change the way that you play the game it's going to change your rotation it's going to make you make certain decisions it's something that you will make decisions based on and you will do it frequently or at least preferably frequently once you have that understood then then you can make a second classification which is information that is important to know but at the same time it is not gameplay impacting right so for example weapon procs are yeah sure you would want the or rather weapon enchant procs are gameplay impacting so here let me show you show you just rather than just talking this out having versatile navigation have, having deadly navigation having your strife stack knowing about that information is good but it's not going to change the way that you, the, the way that you play or at least it's it's very unlikely to so okay then there's the final classification which is information that is i, I consider trivial right it's it's yeah if, if you want to know it it's cool okay you uh, you would like to know it but it's not going to change the way that you play the game and it's not really all that important you you want to know this information simply because you can know it rather than because it's always it's it's going primarily going to be useful then okay great so now you like a ui is, is supposed to con convey information to you we've figured out we've we've determined okay so, what pieces of information is most important secondary like important but not gameplay impacting and trivial okay so what so a big assumption that i have I, I have with making a ui and most a lot of people have this assumption too but i i seemingly take it a bit to an extreme is the idea that the most important thing you should be looking at in a given encounter is your character Right, your character's position, or and the things immediately around it. And the thing is, is that given this assumption, things, information that is being conveyed, that is, any information closer to your character, should be more important. So, the most important information should be information that is cl close to your character. The least important information should be information that is further away from your character excuse me 
So as you as the information gets conveyed, and it, as it's further and further away from your, your your character or the center of your screen, the less important it, it is. Another assumption that I make is that given the fact that you should be focusing here, your UI elements should be processed by your peripheral vision. They're not something that I de like, sure, when the fight's easy, you don't have to worry about mechanics. You can tunnel vision, you can high five your keyboard and, and focus all day long. That's great and all, but when it really matters, when it really matters, you're going to be focusing on your character. At least that's what you should be doing. And being able to have, use your peripheral vision to process that information, the, the UI information, as efficiently as possible, allows you to focus on staying alive and also will help you make, will help make you more efficient in doing uh, as much DPS or healing or whatever it is that you need to do. Like it'll, it'll make you more efficient and more able to play well rather than having to spend brain power, effort, focus, whatever you want to call it, processing the information. And so let's talk about like how we do that, at least how I do that. So first and foremost, we got to talk a little bit about the anatomy and physiology of the eye and also how your brain processes visual stimulus or stimuli rather. So the center part of your vision is good at detail and color. That is what it's, it, it's good at. If you want to see details, you're looking straight at it. However, your peripheral vision isn't very really good at these things. It's not very good at detail and it's okay at color, but it's not nearly as good at color as uh, the, the center part of your, your, your vision. The peripheral vision, however, is good at knowing or, or processing positioning and also movement. And so what we should be doing is for this critical information, this gameplay impacting information, we should be leveraging that fact. The fact that it is that your peripheral vision is good at processing, uh, or, or, or good at tracking or identifying position and movement. So how do we do that? Well, for any gameplay impacting buffs or procs or whatever, they should be in fixed locations. Simply put, I believe that that is, that is very important, is to put them in fixed location. So Rampage is always here. Siege Breaker is always there. Blood of the Enemy is always there. Or at least the, the on-use part of it, like the major part, is always there. Right? The minor, uh, the minor essence, always there. Enrage, always there. Is that like I could, I could keep listing this off, but the reasoning is, the reason why I do that, it's always in fixed locations, is because the fact that you're again your your peripheral vision is going to process information, and so this icon, for all intents and purposes, could be entirely black. It could just literally be a black box. It doesn't actually matter what the what the icon is, right? Here. Let's... Again, Siege Breaker could be a black box. The positioning of it, the fact that there's something there tells me the information because I know that if there's something there, that must be Siege Breaker. It has to be Siege Breaker because that's the only thing that could be there. Whereas if, let, let's take the, the sort of inverse example. Let's like, why couldn't it just be a dynamic group where it first, like, it's like this, where, where we have, yeah, let's bring it back up. Okay. We have deadly navigation and personal navigation. Well, the thing is, is that, okay, I know in my peripheral vision, what am I going to know? I'm going to know that I have three buffs there. But I'm not going to read those things. You're not going to read that out of the corner of your eye. It's, it's simply, that's just, that level of detail is something that's processed best by the, the front part of your brain. I mean, not the front part of your brain. I'm sorry, the, the central part of your eye. <laughs> I misspoke there. Sorry. However, so... Knowing, I'm going to know that there's three buffs here, but I'm not really going to know which ones they are because it could be a whole bunch of different things. It could be a whole, who knows? So I'm going to need to spend more effort to figure out which one is it is. Whereas if it's a fixed location, I basically skip that step of needing to discern the things. It makes it a little bit more efficient. Okay. So with icons, 
what happens is that the primary information that is, is that is conveyed is the presence or absence of the proc, like the buff, debuff, whatever it is that you're you're tracking. The presence is the is the primary thing that gets uh, conveyed. All right. Well, with bars, it actually tells you more information because not only is it telling you the presence of the buff, it's also moving. And again, as previously mentioned, your peripheral vision is really good at tracking movement. So when I have this enrage bar, which is what this top blue one is, what happens is that my peripheral vision naturally is going to follow, if I can get the damn thing to proc, it's going to follow that. And it's going to know that, hey, when it gets to here, it's empty. It's gone, right? So I can intuitively know how much time is left on my enrage using my peripheral vision, I don't actually really need to look at the number, or the, the the duration number, how much time is left. I'm not actually really looking at that. You're not going to. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be following that line. And the same thing happens with uh, sudden death, right? Now, the thing is, is that I'm also, because it's further away from my, my primary focus, I have to use other tricks to help me convey that information as well. That's why I have it change color when it gets really close to being over. I should have let that go, but whatever. Now, let's talk about my swing timers because they seem kind of in a weird position. Why are they going upwards? Why not have them horizontally? Well, the thing is, is that again, as because you, your peripheral vision is good at tracking uh, movement, it's actually also going to follow that movement because the reason why our peripheral vision is this way is because we've evolved looking at threats coming like, oh crap, we got a bear or a tiger or whatever the heck it may be coming at us. And I need to know where it is, where it's going, because, oh man, is that going at me? Well, you're naturally going to follow that. Now, so again, you're naturally going to follow the movement. And as previously mentioned, the further away, the further into your peripheral vision, the further away from the center, the less important the information is. Well, the more important thing about the swing timer is when it's right about to hit, which is right here. It's closer to the middle. So not only am I leveraging the fact that, hey, my, my brain's going to process uh, the movement, it's also naturally going to put the most important part closer to the, the focus. And it's going to pull my attention towards the rage bar. Right? It naturally will pull what I'm focusing on towards that rage bar, which is ultimately the most gameplay impacting piece of information as a, as a Fury Warrior is how much rage do I have? Can I rampage yet? I can rampage. Neat. Okay, cool. So a very logical question to ask then is that if we should be building our UIs around prioritizing the uh, efficiency of, of processing for your peripheral vision, then why have all this other information that is not easy to process by your peripheral vision? Why have all these numbers? Why have, if any chance will proc, why have it saying these things? Why have it say gushing wounds? Why have it do these things? Well, the reason for that is that it's never been the case that there's been a fight where 100% of the time you have to be focusing here and you have to rely entirely on your peripheral vision to get the information out of your UI. It's, it's just not happened. And I highly doubt that ever will happen. Who knows? Maybe, maybe one day. But Ultimately, that means that there are going to be opportunities for you to look at your UI. And in that case, when you do that, it helps to have this uh, other information that is more easily processed by the front part of your vision, like the, the center part of your eyes. So once you get over uh, or build, uh, build the initial setup of your UI around having the uh, peripheral vision process information and how to set things up that way. You can also look at it from the perspective, okay, now I'm looking at the UI. Now I get to look at it. And again, you can have use this concept of wherever the cent uh, the central part of where you, your eyes get pulled to, which I'll talk about in a, in a moment, wherever that central part is, m information moving outwards from that should be less and less important. So here's the thing. As in as information gets further and further away from the central area, it's less and less important to 
me in in insofar as it is less gameplay impacting. All right, finally, there's one more property of your eyes and how your how your brain processes it, processes information that you can leverage. Now, this is really sort of into the weeds, but it, it, it's something to th it, I, I think that it's something that's important to think about and at least consider when designing your UI. And, and that's the fact that you don't process information from both of your eyes equally. You have a dominant eye. Now, I am right eye dominant. So you would think that given the fact that I've said that, hey, everything kind of pulls to the left a little bit, why wouldn't I, that that's more for my, my, my left eye, you would think. Well, here's the trick that I'm actually doing when I put it on the left is that it's pulling my right eye a bit left, which means that I'm relying more on my right eye's peripheral vision, right? Here, if I do a line, I'm in combat, of course. There, right? So what happens is that ideally, yeah, I'm, I'm focused here. Well, when I do use, like start trying to process this information, it's going to pull my vision a bit left over here, right? So if everything here, is, like, let's say I'm, I'm able to focus perfectly in the middle. Everything on this side over here is processed by my left eye's peripheral vision, everything here on, on the right side is processed by my right eye's peripheral vision. Well, if I move that center over a little bit, let's say it's right here now, what happens is that now more area is being, is being handled by my right eye. And since I'm right eye dominant anyway, I'm basically leveraging the fact that like, well, since I, I don't actually have, I, I can let the eye that I'm normally gonna use, the, the better eye, to do the heavy lifting and, and handle more stuff, right? So it's already has a priority by my brain to be processed. So that is another thing that you can consider is using picking things on certain sides of your UI, like where which side you put it on, it, it can make a little difference based on which eye, like which eye is dominant for you. And so you can give yourself more peripheral area by just putting things basically on the opposite side so that your your eye has to look across a little bit. And so then you have more area of the screen covered by your peripheral vision.